My name is Ashley Page, I'm a British choreographer and I'm here to make a new work for the Creations in Studio K programme. I started dancing when I was four years old in my local town uh, near where I was born in Kent in England. Um, when I was 12 I went to the Royal Ballet School uh, and studied there for seven years and eventually got into the Royal Ballet Company at Covent Garden. Went through the ranks up to principal by 1984, uh, which was also the first year I had my uh, first professional work performed at the Opera House. I started choreographing in the workshop in 1981. Up until 2002, I was with the Royal Ballet as a dancer and increasingly as a choreographer, uh, particularly during the 90s. And in 2002, I left the company to become the artistic director of Scottish Ballet in Glasgow, Scotland, where I was there uh, for 10 years. Um, two years ago, I left Scottish Ballet to become freelance choreographer and director, since when I've been making work all over the world, um, both ballet and contemporary dance and also directing opera. The music I've chosen is a piece by a British electronic composer called Aphex Twin. His real name is Richard D. James and he's a bit of an eccentric. He lives in Cornwall um, in the southwest of England and uh, uh, makes this dance music I suppose you'd call it. I would say it has a, has a sensuality about it as well as power which is um, very usable as a choreographer. Uh, there's a sort of big slamming industrial beat in it, and virtually all the way through it comes and goes a bit, but it's there most of the time. But there's also um, samples of what sound like horns, big brass orchestral instruments and, and strings, um, so it's quite lush. It's music that I've used before actually, I made a piece for Scottish Ballet in 2005, um, but it's the kind of music that's endlessly useful because it's so abstract, you can do different things with it. And I always wanted to revisit it, and Marcello wanted a piece of the length of this music, so it kind of suggested itself, really. Travelling around the world, as, as I do, um, working with different companies, it's, um, I suppose, a fairly good position to to uh, compare. And I would say that given the size of, of Tulsa Ballet, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, I would say it's light on its feet, but not lightweight. It can move around, it can tour easily. So um, the, the fact that all of the dancers are sort of kind of soloist level, I would say, and that's um, not that usual. In a company like this, um, it's more fluid, it's more flexible, and people in the Corte Ballet can do principal roles. So that there's a kind of community spirit, if you like, um, a more democratic way of using the dancers. Con considering that, that the average age is fairly young, it seems to me, um, they are all pretty experienced, and the, the more uh, experienced ones, the ones that have done more of the, the bigger roles, um, I would say, you know, rank uh, amongst the, the, the other really good dancers I've worked with all over the world. Um, what's really interesting is that Marcello has an ethos in place, which I'm sure he's worked hard to, to, to put there over, well, he's nearly 20 years now. Um, and that shows very much in, the, in the, the discipline in the dancers and in the approach to the work and the, the artistic staff. Actually, I would say the, you know, the, the fact that it's a small staff for the whole company. Everyone is here because they're interested, um, it seems, and that, that makes a difference.